Hello. Welcome on back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. The other day on my Instagram stories, I posted a, um, like a question, what's it called? It's not a quiz, it's a, uh... okay, so a survey. I posted a survey, right? And many of you had responded asking that I create a tutorial for those with dry skin. With that said, I have our good friend and model on back with us today, Lakin Romine. And I can tell you, this is this is gonna be a very uh, informative <laughs> tutorial. So grab a notepad, gather around the TV, turn up your headphones, tell the kids to go to the room for the next 20 minutes because class is in session. So without further ado, if you wanna learn how I created this look right here, then keep on watching. So to begin, I'm using the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Lines Hyaluronic Acid Serum to prep Lakin's skin with. This is a drink of water for the skin. Hyaluronic acid is really where it's at. It plumps the skin, it hydrates it. I've even heard that it's supposed to smooth the look of fine lines. I, honestly, I don't know about all that. I find active ingredients like vitamin A, such as retinol or even salicylic acid do a better job with smoothing fine lines over time with continued use. But as for hyaluronic acid, it does retain moisture, so it's gonna make your skin look super plump and juicy. This specific serum I'm using contains 1.5% hyaluronic acid, and what I love most about using this is that makeup or even other skincare you layer on top won't pill up or create a crazy texture. All right, now that I have this massaged in, I'm using the Elemis Superfood Facial Oil to further prep her skin with. If I'm gonna use oils, I like using it as the last step in the skincare process, you know, on top of serums and, and toners and moisturizers and all that. And I'm not using a lot of this either. I put maybe one or two drops of this into the palms of my hands, warmed it up really well, and now I'm just pressing this into the skin. Now that we have the skin prepped and glowing, I'm gonna take the plexiglass illuminator that I created with my beauty brand, along with the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation in the shade 320 Pine. What I've done here is I've mixed in the smallest amount of that plexiglass illuminator into the foundation on the back of my hand before applying it on with a makeup sponge. This foundation alone already gives a radiant finish to the skin, but with a little bit of that plexiglass illuminator, it amps it up even more. I've been hearing from a lot of y'all that you've been using the same technique, you know, mixing in a bit of that plexiglass into your foundation and you've been loving it, which of course makes me so happy because, you know, that, that that's why I created this product. You can integrate it into your routine in, in so many different ways. Even the foundation I'm using here, you've seen me use a lot on my channel. It's one of my favorites. It blends beautifully. It's fantastic for those with dry skin because the finish is quite glowy, as you can see here. Another great option for those with dry skin is to use a cream foundation. RCMA makes a great one. So does Makeup Forever or even the Good Apple Foundation from KVD Beauty. Okay, next up, I'm using this Magic Touch Concealer from Anastasia Beverly Hills and using this to conceal the under eyes and highlight different areas of the face, such as the chin, Cupid's bow, and center of the forehead before also blending this in with the makeup sponge. I don't use this concealer as often as I should because it really is a beautiful concealer. It's hydrating, it's medium to full coverage. It feels lightweight though, and it doesn't oxidize. You know what I mean by that? Like the, the, the shade doesn't shift as you wear it throughout the day. I forget if I said it already, but the shade I'm using here is the shade four, which I think pairs nicely with the foundation shade we used earlier. As you may have noticed, I went deeper with the foundation shade because she has a spray tan right now. So I shade matched her to her body. So now everything should be matching up. Once we have this blended, I'm gonna use this Tarte Shape Tape Concealer in the shade 57N and using this to add some warmth and dimension back to the face by applying this to the hollows of her cheekbones, around the temples and forehead, just below the tip of the nose and a little under the chin as well before blending this out with the sponge. Besides the setting powder and the blush, I'm not using a whole lot of powders today. That's pretty important to mention for those with dry skin. Try reaching for liquids and creams as opposed to powders. So instead of using a powder bronzer and a, and a powder foundation and blush and highlighter, use the liquid or cream formula of those products. That's really gonna help keep the skin looking and feeling moisturized throughout the day 
which is one of the main struggles I hear about from people with dry skin. I hear it all the time. Spence, my skin just soaks up skincare and makeup and looks dry. What do I do? So it all starts with the skincare. You guys saw that step already. And then of course, how I'm choosing to layer the makeup products together. Do you see how radiant her skin is looking right now? My goal before I use powder is to get her skin as glowy and hydrated as possible. Almost to a point where, <laughs> almost to a point where it looks kind of greasy. And then I'll strategically mattify areas of the face where we don't want that shine from while keeping the shine there for other areas, which at the end of the day is creating an illusion, right? It's using the finish of your makeup and skincare to work in unison with light by reflecting it to the areas you control it to. I don't know if that makes much sense, but I'll explain this further after I blend this out and start using the powder. Alrighty, so for powder, I'm using the one size translucent setting powder and using this to set the makeup into place with a powder puff. I'm first starting with the under eye area because this area is usually first to crease. And then I'll take a brush to set the eyelids and eyebrows along with the T-zone of her face as well. How much powder you use really comes down to your preference, the finish you're looking for, and how much product you're using beneath it. Today, I used a good amount of foundation and concealer on Lakin. Um, not because she needs it, obviously, you know, she's stunning without all this makeup stuff, but we are working on camera, so things read a little different. And plus, I wanted to go for a more full coverage glam look with her today. So of course, you don't have to use as much as I'm using. You can tailor this to your liking, but if you really do, guys, have dry skin, to a point where you have, you know, like dead skin cells just flaking off like crazy. I'm about to give you the most valuable information you'll ever hear. <laughs> so listen to this. Yes, of course, the products I'm using today have a great effect on the results we're looking for. But the biggest game changer here is not the product itself, but how I'm applying it. I know, it doesn't sound like anything revolutionary right away, but take a second to absorb that and think about how I've applied and blended everything up until this very point in this tutorial. Do y'all notice anything? All of the application and blending of these products have been in pressing motions. I used a sponge to press the foundation into her skin. I tapped and pressed the liquid contour before further blending it out with a sponge. I didn't drag it. I didn't, I didn't, you know, buff it in circular motions with a brush, but I actually pressed and pushed that product in. Just as you're seeing me here do with this powder, pressing, 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 never dragging. Because let me tell you something, when you have dry skin, you have the dry, um, you know, dead skin cells that are sitting on the surface of your skin on top of that newer, fresher skin. So if you're applying your products on with a brush and you're using circular motions to buff it in with back and forth and using a brush to sweep on powder, the small little bristles of those brushes are actually going underneath those flakes of dry skin, partially lifting it up off the surface. So what happens? Not only does your skin look drier because it has dry flakes of skin peeling off, but because of that, it also looks like you have more texture on the skin, thus creating the opposite effect of what we want, which is a smooth makeup finish, right? And honestly, regardless of your skin type, I find this technique to work best on everyone. So now for blush, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury Swish and Pop Blusher in the shade Ecstasy, and I'm applying this onto Lakin's cheeks in a, <laughs> can you guess? A patting motion, patting this into the apples of her cheeks and even bring this up onto the brow bone. This may be the first time I'm using this shade of blush from Charlotte Tilbury, and I really, really, really like it. You'll see me even add a bit more of this on later on in the tutorial, but for now, I just wanted to get some color onto the cheeks to help give me some direction of where I wanted to take the eye makeup. So now for the brows, I'm using this Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze and running this through the brows, starting by going the opposite direction the brow hairs grow in to get them fully saturated with the product. It'll look a little... <laughs> It'll look a little crazy at first, but once we start brushing them back down into place, you'll see it come together. A couple of weeks ago, 
I posted a tutorial with our model, Caitlin, and she had this bushy, full, but clean brow look. And I was sharing with you how I achieved that. And this is how, it's really a simple process, but quite effective. And I think it's perfect for, for the look I'm going for today. Lakin already has really beautiful full brows, so I don't wanna overdo it with product. I want the eyes and the skin to be the main focus in today's look. And here, I'm just using a smidge of eyeshadow to fill in the gaps in the brows. Nothing too dramatic, just a very light touch that makes a subtle difference. Now heading back to our setting powder, I'm using this to bake the jawline by placing the powder right underneath that contour. We'll leave this on while I do the eye makeup, and once we come back to wipe this off later, it'll leave behind a hint of brightness to this area, which will accentuate the contours of her cheek and jawline. To start on the eye makeup, I'm using this new metallic gel eyeshadow from Rem Beauty in the shade Affirmation and gliding this right onto the upper lid. I'm kind of patting this in and diffusing out the pigment with this flat eyeshadow brush. I want most of this pigment on the actual lid, you know, below the crease. And then you'll see me diffuse and blend this up and out towards the brow bone. Y'all know by now I love gel and cream eyeshadows, so... When the brand sent me this, I, I knew I had to try it out. Now they say you can layer this on top of shadows or alone as is, but I really wanted to try using it as a base and building the shadows on top of it. So that's what we're gonna do today. And here is what I was talking about. I'm buffing that pigment upwards towards the brow so we get that seamless smoky effect with the glitter pigments. And then I'll also apply this the very same way to the lower lash line. Next up, I'm using this eyeshadow here from the Rem Beauty Go Go Boots eyeshadow palette and placing this right on top of that gel pigment to not only set it into place, but to also intensify it as the eyeshadow is very similar in shade to the gel we use. That's the great thing about layering powder eyeshadows on top of gels and creams. It gives something for it to grip onto. It, it, it prolongs the wear and it gives that ultimate color payoff and coverage. You know what I should have done? Well, it's too late now, but what I should have done on the other eye is applied the powder eyeshadow first and then the gel eyeshadow on top of it, just to see, you know, if, if there's a difference. Well, next time. But now, dipping into the shade here from the same eyeshadow palette, I'm having Lakin look straight ahead. I'm putting my brush where I want to place this, then I have her close her eyes so I can start blending this shade in right in the crease. By adding in this deeper shade in the crease, it's going to give dimension and depth to the eye shape, which makes it look even bigger and more open, almost like contouring, but for the eyes. And then you'll see me use the same shadows in the same order for the lower lash line. The gel eyeshadow we used dried down pretty quickly, so the powder eyeshadows didn't grip onto it as much as I thought it would, which, you know, it, it isn't a bad thing. We just kind of have to improvise now. So once I started noticing the fallout, I placed a bit of translucent powder underneath the eyes to catch it and prevent me from making a mess of this. But it's inevitable. I mean, these shadows do contain glitter and shimmer, so there's gonna be fallout. That goes for any brand. And I know I was a little harsh if you saw it in my, in my, um, my TikTok when I reviewed the first launch of Rem Beauty. But listen, it was just my opinion. I wasn't excited about the eyeshadow shades. I didn't feel drawn to the packaging. The price point for the false lashes was insane. Like 15 or $16 or something for lashes that look like they came from the dollar store. Like have you completely and utterly <laughs> lost your mind? I still can't get over that. But I will say, I think they redeem themselves in my books with this second collection. There are a few more things I wanna try, but from what I have tried, I do really like it, and it's something I would go out and purchase. So anyways, moving on, I'm using this gel black eyeliner from one size, and I'm running this through both her waterline and upper lash line before I buff it out with a brush, just to give it a more worn in effect. And the brush I'll end up using to do this with is the same angled brush I used for her brows earlier. So in total, I've only used two brushes for this eye makeup today. It's really quite um, easy and nearly foolproof. And to be honest, I would have really liked this look too, how we just added a little mascara and some lip gloss and called it a day. But the last look I filmed with Lakin was quite, um, it was quite natural. <laughs> so we wanted a bit more glam today. We were calling it our, our, um, our Southern glam. I styled her hair real big guys, added on some diamond earrings and with her denim top, we were definitely getting 
that that uh, southern glam charm. <laughs> oh goodness. Uh, keep it moving, Spence. All right, now I'm taking this Drama Bomb Extreme Volume Mascara from Oma Beauty and running this through her top and bottom lashes. I'm gonna add on some false lashes today, but this makes for a really great start and will help blend in the falsies with her natural lashes. And for whatever it's worth, I'm using the travel size of this mascara, which is why it looks tiny in that product shot. And to keep everything clean, I'm dusting off the fallout the setting powder has caught underneath the eyes. I'm going to complete the other eye real quick off camera, then head over to these lashes from Tati Lashes in the style Rich AF to pop right on. I think this is a great style to use because they're not over the top dramatic to a point where you're going to look back at photos of this glam and say to yourself, what in the world was I thinking? <laughs> you know what I mean? It adds the element of glam, yes, but while also remaining... Um, kind of timeless. And then heading back to the complexion, I'm dusting that setting powder right off. You see what I mean here about leaving behind that slight hint of brightness? I think it looks really beautiful and I'm using whatever powder I have left in that brush to press into the T-zone. I am noticing the cheeks and the under eye are looking a little dull, so I'm heading back to that same blush we used earlier from Charlotte Tilbury and adding on a bit more. Notice that I'm not afraid to bring this blush up to the under eye area. You see me do this quite often in my tutorials. I think it looks flattering and it does help bring back some vibrancy to the under eye, especially if you're experiencing a grayish hue from either dark under eye circles peeking through the concealer or if you've had eyeshadow fallout that's shifted the tone. Now for my favorite part, I'm heading back to the plexiglass illuminator and I'm applying this on for that glass-like glow finish to the skin. Oh, it's just the best. And yes, I admit, maybe I'm being a little biased because after all, I did create the product myself, but I mean, come on, the proof is in the pudding. Look how it just makes the skin so radiant and dewy. Now, of course, I'm, I'm being strategic with this placement. You don't want to apply this all over the face or else you're going to look a little crazy. I'm just tapping this on with a makeup sponge to only the areas where I want her skin to reflect light. So the cheekbones, down the bridge of the nose, chin, and just a bit on the forehead. So to start on the lips, I'm using this lip liner from Morphe in the shade Sweet Tea and using this to trace the borders of her lips with. I'm not overlining a whole lot here, just you know, following her natural lip shape. While I'm applying this on though, I want to talk to you about setting sprays and the ones you should use for drier skin. Try not to use anything with alcohol in it. Usually fixing sprays contain alcohol in their formula to lock down the makeup and soak up any oils. But for drier skin, use setting sprays that contain ingredients like um, glycerin, which will give a luminous effect. Some good ones are the luminous spray from One Size or the Tatcha Dewy Skin Mist or even the MAC Fix Plus spray, which is the one I'm using today. But first, I'm going to use this Makeup by Mario Ultra Suede Lipstick in the shade Sierra to lightly fill in the center of the lip and diffuse out that liner. Looking back at it now, I, I wish I would have made the lip shade more on the mauve pink side. I would have liked to see how that looked with the cool tones of lavender eye makeup and the denim blue shirt she's wearing, but that's all right. Next time, I think this still looks really beautiful, especially when I add on some gloss, which is gonna be this clear gloss from M Cosmetics. I'm just layering this right on top for that high shine finish. I do think everyone should have a clear lip gloss in their makeup bag for this reason. It completely transforms the finish of the lip, but because it's clear, it doesn't shift the color of the lipstick or liner you use with it. And lastly, I'm using the MAC Fix Plus Spray to set this makeup into place, which makes this the final step in how I created the super luminous look on our naturally beautiful model. I hope you all enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this video a big old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out more of my work on my Instagram at Painted by Spencer. And until next time, I'll see you soon.